So really popular in our industry is fixed. Um, all on fours, uh, fixed zirconia hybrids. We're doing a ton of them. Every lab is doing lots of them, but we're kind of learning that not every patient really should get them. They're very hard to clean um, and they tend to break and patients really need something that they can pop out and clean easily. So Locator came out with a great thing. So a patient has already gone through treatment. They have all your multi-unit abutments in there. They came out with a locator that goes on pretty much any multi-unit. So think about it. Here's a patient that's already invested into it, but now you're finding out that they either need that flange to fill out their face, they need, uh, they need a stability of a palate, or maybe they just can't keep it clean. These screw right on. It's super easy. There's only one size that kind of fits all, and then they'll be able to convert a fixed to a removable. The only downside is, is this whole thing with the sleeve and the abutment and the nylon in the housing adds 5.35 millimeters of vertical height. Well, you gotta make sure you have the clearance for all this, but it's a great option for patients that need to get out of fix, and we're kind of seeing that more and more. Uh, one of my favorite attachments, we're gonna step away from locator finally, but one of my favorite attachments is the clicks ball attachment. There's a couple different reasons why I like this one. Uh, the biggest one is we call it clicks for a reason. There's actual an audible click that is heard when a patient tries it in and puts it in. And they like that. It gives a sense of security and confidence. Uh, the locator, while it does give a click over time, it kind of goes away. This, when that patient stops hearing it and feeling it, then they know it's time for a new nylon. Uh, another reason why I really like it is the housing. You can angle it. So if you look at these two pictures, the one on the left is a locator and that housing, see how thin that acrylic is right by that housing? That's either gonna show the housing or it's gonna be a point at where it breaks all the time. With the clicks, you can actually angle that housing back and get more room for more acrylic. It's actually a nice feature. Another point is that inside that, um, that clicks abutment, there's no hole like there is for the locator. So stuff and food and, and various debris cannot get impacted, so you'll always have a seat. Now disregard this next picture that shows a hole in it, because that's actually for the bar type. But notice how that housing encompasses more of the ball. You get more retention out of that, a 365 degree retention over that ball. And if you see on the left, those slits, that's what's gonna allow that, um, that self-aligning. So when you get a locator case, you should be telling the patient, you have to line it up and push it into place. You don't bite it into place. With clicks, they can actually bite it into place because of that sphere and those crosshairs, it's gonna find and snap over. Also, it's, it's a lot less expensive than locator, so it's a good option for patients. Um, this is actually a really funny old photocopy of a, of a photocopy of a fax of a photocopy of a picture, but it shows you real quickly that they, they handle up to 30 degrees of divergency by changing the housing position. So when you're working on a patient, you can line them up individually, or we actually sell um, a paralleling tool. But you get the idea. You just need them level across that denture, when you process or pick up those housings chair side, you want them all on the same level. That's gonna give you your path of insertion. So zest and locator, uh, while I said can cover up to 40 degrees of divergency, they came out with a new product called the RTX. This was because they were missing out on some of the cases where they need 60 degrees of divergency. Same concept, but just a little bit more to it in order to service those cases. So if you look at this picture, what it is, it's the only real difference that allows it to do it are the two humps inside of the housing. That allows for more pivoting, so it allows up to that 30 and 30. It can be 40 and, it can be 40 and 20. It can be 50 and 10. Just 60 degrees is what it covers. So you have your standard retention inserts, those are the ones that come out with it. But 
they started to feel that people were using these RTXs on times where they didn't need that much divergency. So they actually came out with a limited range. Some people still like the RTX, but they didn't need that much divergency. So this actually limits the range of it and actually has a little bit less movement. So RTX did a couple great things when it came out. The first one is if you've ever dealt with regular locator, you had to buy the abutment separate and then you bought the housing and the insert separate. Finally, they got smart and it's all in one package because you really can't use one without the other. Um, the abutment is actually in that cap. That cap serves, serves as a kind of a holder and you can actually use it as a tool to put it in. So that's nice. And also they've pinked everything. The abutment is pink. So if the patient's looking in the mirror without their denture in, it's not as obvious. And then the housing's pink. So it hides a little bit better in acrylic. Another great thing is the original locator, we've mentioned it a few times, this huge hole in it needed a special tool. The RTX, they made it simple and it's just got an 050 hex driver in it. So it's probably a driver you already have in the practice. This is huge and a lot of people don't realize this. So if you noticed on the picture of the locator on the left, that has the housing extending farther than the nylon. So if that patient would put it in and it wasn't directly over that abutment pushing down and it hit it at an angle, that housing was scraping the side of, the side of those abutments before the nylon engaged. And that's where we saw a lot of wear. RTX fixed that and put the nylon farther below the housing. So actually the nylon hits the abutment rather than the metal. So it's just making those abutments last a little bit longer. But you compromise space. RTX is a bigger attachment. That might not seem like a lot, but for those that are working in tight spaces, 0.1 millimeters can make a difference between a good looking tooth and one that's been carved down and is too thin. So just keep that in mind when you're treatment planning cases. RTX take up more room, but there's a little bit more you can do with them. And if you remember anything about RTX, this is an RTX and this is a T-Rex. Don't get them confused, it's a bad day for everybody. Uh, Equator is a great attachment. It actually comes out of Italy. It is the smallest diameter uh, in, uh, attachment there is. It's great for the cases that don't have a lot of space. Also, they come up to seven millimeter. So that case I mentioned earlier, where the doctor wanted a locator on a seven millimeter case, we had to switch them over to Equator. Uh, it's a good size difference. Um, vertical, it's not that big, not that much of a difference, but diameter wise, 4.4 to 5.4, a whole millimeter difference can save and save a case easily if you're working on limited um, buckle to lingual space. I mean, you can fit it under the tiniest tooth. It takes up so little room. It's really nice. Just like all the other cases, it comes with all your different nylons. Um, so it comes with the yellow, that's your processing, clear is your standard, and then you can move between the different colors. And because they wanted to also service more divergent, they came out with a system called the Smart Box. It's actually unique. It's got a two metal housing system. You can kind of see it in that picture but there's an outer metal housing and an inner, and then there's like a hump in the middle that allows for that pivoting. It's actually a pretty unique system, but if you ever run into a patient that looks like they have two metal housings, it's most likely an equator uh, smart box. O-rings are huge. We sell a lot of O-rings. I don't know if anybody on this webinar places O-rings or services O-rings, but there's a lot of them out there. Um, there's also a lot of different brands, and for decades, they've been putting in different size balls. So there really is no standard. While there is a size that we refer to as standard, it's not always going to be an easy find. Something you got to remember is they only correct up to 10 degrees of divergency. And there's patients out there with this that have all these mini implants and you can see a couple of them there quite off on the divergency. That's going to be hard to make uh, a restoration that's going to be able to engage all those easily for the patient. But sometimes they come in 
and they look just like this. I mean, these are our ideal O-ring uh, mini implant placements. It's very common, the lab I was at, that doctors would just take an impression of this and send it in. Uh, while your impression material might capture these balls nice, the stone we were gonna pour it up in probably won't. Um, and we're, it's gonna break, it's not gonna pour up rightly, and we're not gonna be able to figure out exactly what size of O-ring we need. So they do make impression copings for O-rings. So I highly recommend if you do service any of these cases, use these parts, you know, get them in there, get your impression, use analogs to pour it up, and you're gonna get a much better result. But O-rings are kind of known for needing parts replaced more often. Uh, this chart here, over a six month study, those pictures on the left, that's gonna sh that shows the, the O-rings during normal use, chewing and stuff like that. But the picture on the right is what happens to them as patients take them in and out and in and out and in and out over a six months period. These parts wear, and that's why we sell so many of them. Even the housings can take a lot of damage. It's usually because of the over-divergency between them. They only do 10, but um, replacing the parts is, you know, we have to service a lot of these. So getting the parts and getting them done correctly um, is gonna save a lot of these cases. So we're gonna talk about the housings on the O-rings. There's two different closed housings, one being a little taller than the other. And what's become more popular over the years is the one on the right, the open housing. So there's no top to it. It actually adds no more additional vertical clearance. Um, just like all the other ones, again, it's the permablock, blocking it out underneath. You don't wanna lock that acrylic onto those housings. And then you'd still remount the denture um, for the, the hole that you need and add those lingual escapes and then make sure that that acrylic goes up rather than down. If you're gonna use those, um, those open rings for the housings, same method, you just need a lot more permablock because you need to block out over it, under it, all around it. You gotta make sure that none of that acrylic adheres to that mini implant or it's gonna be a bad day trying to get that thing out. If you do any amount of O-ring cases, you know how hard it is to get those o, the rubber inserts into the ring, in and out. We sell a um, O-ring insertion tool. Uh, has, does sta handles both the micro and the standard size. I know I mentioned standard is not a thing, but that's your normal size O-rings. It handles both of those. So the caps unscrew, that. Uh, rubber insert goes into it, you screw the cap on, you put the housing on the outside and you push and it's gonna lock that thing into it. It's gonna pay for itself if you do more than four a month easily because of all the time you will spend trying to get those O-rings in and out. So probably one of the most common questions we get at Preet is I have a patient with uh, ball attachments, what size O-rings do I need? and then they'll send us the measurement of that ball. That's really not gonna tell us too much. I mean, it helps, but what we're looking for is the retention zone, or I call it the neck. That's the measurement we need to determine which, in, which uh, rubber insert's gonna work, because that's the rubber insert internal diameter at rest. Plus those balls, if this patient's had it for 20 years, it's probably not the same size it was when it was seated. So we have a great chart online and in our book that kind of goes through all the different sizes that we carry and that internal diameter. I recommend to everybody, if you're seeing these kind of cases and you're ever wondering what type of, what size that ball is, we sell a thing called a combo pack. What this does, is it has two of every size. So while the patient's in the chair, you can try them on until you find out which size it is. And then you can either order the parts or work with Row to, to let them know it is, you know, black number threes. Then they can get you the housings and the inserts you need, and there's no more additional patient or additional appointments trying to figure it out. So all the ones I've talked about, we come out, we came out with a really great retention option card. So it talks about all the attachments plus a few other ones, and it shows you the retention levels um, from lowest to highest. So if you have a patient come in and you see that it's a blue 
and you see that it's not holding it into place, then you know you can move to pink or you can move to clear, talking about locators and all the other various sides. Great reference, you know, put it up in your lab in your office and you'll never have a question about these again. Now there's also a new uh, attachment coming out, really popular. Uh, it's from Lego. Again, that's just a joke.